Some of the most basic questions are whether a person feels like their medicine is doing what it's supposed to, if they feel like they're able to walk and do things that they'd like to do, if they can tell that their medicine wears off between, between doses, so I'll ask them if their medicine's lasting one dose to the next. And when a person describes a specific problem that bothers them, I like to know how that falls into the timing of their medicines. So if they're experiencing cramping and toe curling, I'd like to know what time of day. If that's happening in the middle of the night, it might be a sign that their last dose is wearing off. If they're having dyskinesia, I like to know if it's half an hour after the last dose or all day long. So I like to know the timing of the symptoms and how long they last and how it relates to the most recent dose of medication. Parkinson's is like a moving target. So I tell people that the perfect balance of what works changes over time and that we have to keep adjusting to keep up with it. So sometimes what worked a year ago or even six months ago may not be what's the perfect combination today. And even medicines that were tolerated very well, so a person felt good, they didn't have side effects. As they get older, they may be more sensitive to side effects of those same medications. Also health changes, memory changes, our body's metabolism changes, and so we have to keep responding to that and how the medicines are doing. So these are questions we repeat over and over and over again. We ask about balance and falls. We ask about freezing. So I want to know if people are having a hard time getting started when they try to walk or get through doorways. We also want to know what's going on with the rest of your health. So if you had new medicines added by another doctor, or new health circumstances. If you have an upcoming surgery, we want to know about that. There are some very important pieces of advice we can give to avoid unnecessary complications that can come when people who aren't familiar with Parkinson's disease participate in your care. We usually say that Parkinson's is not typically life-threatening. It typically changes how you do things and affects quality of life, but there are some things that can be life-threatening, like falls and swallowing trouble. Um, if people have swallowing that's causing their food to go down the windpipe, they can get a pneumonia and that can be quite serious. So these are things I like to screen for because people may not even realize they can be related to Parkinson's sometimes. Had we not, I don't think, been at a facility like this where they were aware of, of swallowing issues and um, you know a cognitive aspect and so forth. So, so in conversations with the doctor, we were always alerted to you know the potential, so that they could be checked out and treated or dealt with, you know, before it became a big issue. Sometimes the dialogue that takes place in the clinic visit is helpful to pull out symptoms that a person may not have even recognized were important to talk about or even to keep an eye on. So sometimes we're talking about things that are the most important today, but sometimes it's also opening our eyes to what to keep an eye on and discuss in the future. So there is some education that takes place in working with someone who knows about Parkinson's to help someone recognize what things can be modified to try to make life a little bit better. We like to ask about depression and mood. It's very important to talk about that because research from the National Parkinson Foundation that thousands of people with Parkinson's helped conduct showed us that depression can be even more important to quality of life than even falls or walking or tremor. So these are important things to bring up in the clinic visit besides just the very obvious parts of Parkinson's.